Well, the quarterback race will ultimately come down to how well does the personnel fit around them. That includes the offensive line and what they can do well. Let's go. Let's get into it, shall we? You are Locked On Bandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. On today's episode, we look to discover how the strengths of the offensive line will more than likely dictate who will be the better option at quarterback. Also, what the running backs can do well will will, uh, play a factor in who the best fit for quarterback is uh, in in addition to the offensive line. It'll all be kind of predicated on the run game. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And Vandy basketball versus Kentucky, story of two halves, shoot well in the first, kind of fall apart in second. We'll update you on that. Thank you for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So uh, Tim Beck and Chris Kleenakis, Kleenakis will have to determine what this relatively inexperienced overall mystery of an offensive line can do well before they can truly evaluate, evaluate who the right quarterback is and why do I say relatively inexperienced? Not because they haven't played. Guys like Gage Pitchford, who's from my neck of the woods, uh, East Coweta. I'm right down the road uh, from Fayetteville uh, and at Fayette County, so I know that area really, really well. Um, you know, he started seven games in the in SEC play. Um, you have Stephen Lasoya coming over from Mississippi State. He he's got some starts under his belt. Um, you know, there's some guys coming in that have a little bit of experience, and then there's a lot of guys also in that room that don't have a ton of experience. So when I say relatively inexperienced, I mean this group hasn't played together yet, they haven't played in this scheme yet, and they haven't figured out kind of what they do well as a unit. Last year did them a major disservice as well. Um, they It was kind of a mess scheme-wise last year, so I don't think – we got a really good, true look at what this offensive line can really do. So I, I think that did not give us a clear picture of who the right quarterback was, right? Because we didn't know exactly what they could do. I think the I think the coordinator last year, uh, Joey Lynch, was just calling plays, and I don't know that he really kind of knew the relationship of, okay, do I have Swan or Seals in and what this offensive line group can do? Or – and he couldn't set up his receivers, and it just it just snowballed into something that just became um, unmanageable. And as my man Stephen Willis at Locked On Ole Miss says, a rolling ball of butcher knives. So what this group is going to have to do, Tim Beck, a little bit more experience, I think has a little bit you know, better plan coming in. Uh, he won 10 games last year at New Mexico State, which is absolutely impressive. Jerry Kill is there. Uh, Chris Clean. Kleenakis is there. Um, he has a lot of experience with this type of quarterback uh, during his time at Louisville with uh, with Lamar Jackson. Um, I, I think you have a really good group of offensive linemen here, but we just honestly don't know what they can do. And so, why does that? Why is that going to determine who the quarterback is? Well, this is because the quarterbacks are the are similar but also in other areas vastly different. So, like, they're both running quarterbacks. They're both dual-threat guys. They're both extremely tough. They both have a lot of great leadership qualities. They both have moxie. They both have, they both have the intangibles that you need. Nate Johnson's a little bit smoother, a little bit, like, got a little bit of, a little bit of swag to him, kind of like that, you know, he's, he's kind of like the coolest guy in the room. Diego Pavia comes in. He's like the, he's like the WWE guy, man. He, he's going to deliver, he's going to deliver shots. He's going to get up and get in your face about it. He's going to, he's going to bring some of that mojo that you need. Okay. So, but if your offensive line 
is better suited as a perimeter run team or an inside zone, zone read type scheme where you're going to have some perimeter runs or you're going to have some perimeter options, stuff like that. If your offensive line is better at zone blocking, it's probably going to be Nate Johnson is going to have a slight advantage here because he's probably your better zone runner, your better uh, instinctual runner, you're definitely your better guy on the edge. Um, he's a lot faster, a lot more explosive. So if you have things like that, that this offensive line is good with doing, then Nate Johnson is going to be your guy. And that's how, that's how you're going to determine that. Okay. Um, what in, what in the scheme fits the offensive line? What in this scheme also fits the quarterback with that offensive line. And we'll talk about how the running backs fit into all this too, because they're going to help determine uh, what this run game looks like pass game wise. You know, I, I think when you look at the personnel fits, we'll, we'll like really deep dive into that um, on another episode. But when you look at what you have on the perimeter and a tight end and, and kind of what you have in the passing game, what your strengths, that's also going to determine how well your quarterback does. So, um, but let's stick with offensive line and run play uh, run game. And then, you know, if if sprint out passing is your thing, they're both pretty good at sprint out passing. But I think Nate Johnson has a slight advantage there because he's a lot more sudden. He's longer. Um, he can he can uh, threaten the edge a little bit quicker than Diego Pavia. So if it gets to that and if this offensive line is good at sprint out protection, then it may favor Nate, Nate Johnson. So the, the point of all this is you've got guys um, that you have to determine what they do well. And I've yeah, that's that's the main point. You have to first evaluate. That's what the spring is going to be about. It's going to be about find, finding the right five, then finding the right eight, which you're going to add. You're going to find your five. You're going to add three more, and eventually you're going to build out your second unit of guys that like, hey, we're gonna we're we're good. But like your main eight are going to be like your tackle. Uh, and then like your interior exterior, your interior edge uh, swing guy, and then you're like your your full on uh, interior guy. So um, you're gonna have like some rotational guys that can that can come in and uh, and, and fit the bill in, in a rotational thing. But if you had a whole second unit, uh, you're gonna definitely have one of those too. So, um, but it's all gonna come down to you know where Stephen Lasoya fits into this mix, uh, the transfer from Mississippi State. Uh, is he going to be a guard? I mean, you have Gage Pitchford uh, sitting there at right guard. He's going to he's going to play a factor in this whole thing. You know, what does he do well? Um, you know, is he a good down blocker? Can he pull? Is he a good outside zone uh, blocker? Like, does he does he take to that very well? You know, is he good at climbing to the next level? Like, that's going to be questions that are answered in the spring. I think you're going to. I think we're going to see a pretty good outside zone team possibly. I mean, I think we've got some guys that, uh, that look like they may be able to run and uh, I can't wait to see kind of that display uh, in the spring and see kind of what Tim Beck is really kind of thinking with this offensive line. Cause I know he's seen him work out. I know he's seen him run sprints. I know he's seen him do all of that. So it's going to come down to like Grayson Morgan, Leighton Nelson, Gunnar Hansen. Like what are those guys doing? Like how, how are they fitting into this mix? Who's your center, right? Um, what what are you what are you doing there? Because you know you have some you have some options. Does Lasoya uh, slot in at center? We don't know. But Grayson Morgan, the junior, 6'5", 280, um, he's definitely somebody that's long can play can play one of those tackle spots. Um, you have Gage Pitchford who played guard. Could he move out to tackle? Is he somebody that's versatile enough to be able to say, okay, we've got some good interior guys. Um, but we're a little lacking at the tackle position. So like Gage Pitchford played guard last year. Does he move out? Um, where does Leighton Nelson fit into this? He's six six three ten. Like, does do they kick Grayson Morgan down to guard? Do they have um, you know? Th- there's some combinations that uh, Coach Kleinakis Kleinakis is gonna gonna play with Kiva Wesley. He's a He's a uh, he's a graduate transfer, 6'4", 3, 320. Like, does he end up at center? Like, what what are we thinking here? Like, how how do these guys fit in? And that's going to be the biggest answers. Like, a who's your five, T-Mobile style. Um, B, what do they do well together? 
are they great communicators? Because if they are, they can run inside and outside zone because and, and duo because that requires a lot of combos, a lot of a lot of communication of who's got who, who's got what, and and where pressure is coming from. Um, can are they a good pin and pull team? Are are we going to be able to get a good you know a double team out of the right guard and center? Wrap with the guard, uh, getting on the next level, swallowing up a linebacker. You know, is all of that going to come into play? How well do they pass protect? How well do they communicate there? You know, how many pass protections can they handle? Can they keep the quarterback in the pocket on some of these pass games? Are they going to have to go? Are they going to be a team that can't hold up against against the pass rush for a for a normal drop back for a normal five step timing drop back? Are they going to have to go sprint out and quick game? Like where where does where does all that fit with the offensive line? So when you determine all of those answers, and this will a lot of these answers will come in the spring because all uh, these guys are on campus. Um, once you figure out all of those answers, and you figure out okay, we've got a direction now. Which if they don't come out of spring with a direction, uh, then uh, you may want to hit the under on the win total. But um, then, as I said, once you get those answers, then you can say, okay, we are good at X. How does Pavia, how does Nate Johnson, how does Berlowitz, how does St. Hilaire, how does Whit Much, Muschamp play into these strengths, right? Are we a downhill team that benefits Pavia? Are we a perimeter team that probably benefits Nate Johnson more? Uh, are we a combination team? Is there room for a two quarterback system? Can we handle that? You know, are we a quick game team? That's probably Pavia. Are we a are we a quick game but take some shots downfield? That might benefit Nate Johnson a little bit. So we're gonna see kind of how all of this unfolds, and I'm I'm interested to see. Uh, my prediction, um, if, if if I may, um, my prediction is gonna be Pavia. I think he's just too knowledgeable of the system. Um, but that's my early, early prediction on quarterback one um, because he's, you know, Nate Johnson has still got some years left. And so he's still got some time to play. I don't know that they have to rush him. Um, and I'm not saying he doesn't have a chance, but I, I think that's going to be kind of what what happens. I think Vandy's going to turn into a uh, turn into a downhill team. They've got a lot of big, they've got a lot of, a lot of size now. They've got a lot of big, tall guys. So it's going to be determined like who fits the guards, who plays center, where does Lasoya fit, how does he relate with Pitchford? Does Lasoya go to left guard? Pitchford go to right? Then you have uh, Nelson and uh, then you have Nelson and Morgan on the edges. Does Gunnar Hansen play? Like where? Like who's who's where? Who's where? And then how does the quarterback fit in with that? That's going to be that's going to be a determining factor on hey, do they get to the bowl game? Do they get to the six wins or not? Because if they if they if they try to, if they haven't figured that out by the Virginia Tech game, they're in trouble because that's going to be a massive L. Uh, they can't wait until they can't wait until Alabama to figure that out. They can't wait until the Tennessee game to figure that out. It's going to be too late. They have to figure that out. They have to figure out the first layer in the spring. Second layer at fall camp, name your quarterback and just freaking go full steam ahead. Right? You have a package for Nate Johnson. If you wish, you can do that. Not a true court, not a true two quarterback system, but you can have some packages for Nate Johnson as he comes in uh, to kind of give you guys a, to kind of give you guys to kind of give the offense a spark. So um, I'm excited to see how it plays out, truthfully. So, um, but how do the running backs play into this? Um, what you know? Again, where do they fit? It's gonna that's gonna that's gonna help determine some of these answers as well. So we're gonna talk about that because um, you know, that's a very very important part. But hang on for that. So we're gonna be uh, all right talking about eBay Motors. That is correct. Passion, drive. And patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. 
And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, welcome back. Segment number two. Uh, we're talking about Vandy football. We're talking about we're, – we're dreaming up every scenario and how they're going to choose the, the quarterback one position. And we're going to figure out just how everyone on the roster, uh, from the quarterback themselves to the offensive line to the running backs, all the way down to the student equipment staff. I don't know how they're going to factor in, but we're going to figure that out. So um, – so how do the running backs factor in the quarterback race? I think they factor a great deal. I think with the running backs, that's just as important as the offensive line as far as like determining your best fit at the uh, at the quarterback position. Now, there's no position group on that offense more important than the offensive line. Don't get it twisted. But, you know, what these running backs can do is also going to determine what – you know what these quarterbacks are going to be able to accomplish because if you have a good zone zone running back with a paired with a really good zone offensive line i mean maybe there's more of an avenue to play Nate Johnson because you're going to run some zone read stuff where he comes off of the backside um and and messes with that in that's his bet that's his best run play uh, if you don't believe me go watch the Florida game go watch his 27 yard touchdown against Florida um, that will tell you everything you need to know about why that is his best play. Um, and I have that play on this channel. It's the most watched video. So a lot of you have probably already seen it. Go back and watch it. You'll see exactly why uh, that's his best play. So with that said, you know, you have different running styles. You have different guys with different running styles that have different things that they're good at. So you have – you have Chase Gillespie, who's a little bit smaller. He's good out of the backfield. He's he's kind of like your um, jack of all trades, master of none type situation. All right, you have um, you know he's somebody that I think could probably be a good zone runner. Could probably be a good outside zone runner. Um, Dylan Betts, Polly. I don't know if he factors in at all. Cedric Alexander, the sophomore from Austin. Uh, five nine, two hundred pounds. He's a little bowling ball. He's probably a good inside zone runner. Uh, if I it, if I had to kind of project out what he would be really good at, um, and, and I think that benefits this offensive line because I I think if they can gel, they can be really good at that play. Uh, Diego Benson, uh, not sure what he not sure what he can do. Uh, don't really know much about him to project that. AJ Newberry, uh, six one one ninety seven. If you're going to run power, that's your guy, right? He's a little bit bigger, 6'1", 200 pounds, a little bit taller, probably more of a downhill guy. So if you have these like downhill running backs, I, I tend to think that if you're going to get your um, – I, I think if you're going to get your quarterback involved in the run game, you have to have some little, some counter stuff uh, there. And if you're going to have some, some counter stuff – you know, counter, power, pen and pull, duo, stuff like that that's downhill, that's going to, you know, you're you're probably going to have a quarterback that needs to get out on the edge. Nate Johnson. I think Pavi can get out on the edge too. Nate Johnson can run downhill. Um, But, uh, you know, Nate Johnson is a better outside runner than Diego Pavi, and Diego Pavi is a better inside runner than Nate Johnson. not saying they're not good at those things, but that's kind of where you're at. So, um I think if you have somebody that's able to run outside zone, you have bootleg available, which both these quarterbacks are really good at bootleg. So I think that kind of brings it more into like a draw. Uh, if you have somebody that could run that stretch outside zone, maybe you could do some sort of running back jet read where the running back goes straight across and then tries to get the edge as fast as possible and you stretch it or you run power and you pull the guards and, and not block the end and you just, block power on the inside, block uh, jet on the outside, and use your running backs that way. 
Um, if you have a good jet sweep guy, you could also do that from the wide receiver spot. And we'll talk more about that and how that fits in. Um, cause you have Quincy Skinner as well. And he could possibly be your jet guy too. So a lot of options here, but again, it's going to, it's going to come down to like just watching these guys and how they, how they assimilate into the system. How do they, um, how do they get involved with uh, with that? How how are they um, how do they fit? And how do they take to um, how do they take to coach uh, Kleenakis on the offensive line? Um, how does uh, how does Coach Mo get them going at the running back position? How does how does Coach Beck um, and uh, Coach Kill? You know how do they um, how do they take that collection of talent and mold it all together? Because it's inexperienced. And it's not inexperienced because they haven't played. It certainly doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means, the only thing it means, is that they haven't played together. And that is literally all. They just haven't played together. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It just is what it is. And they have to find those answers. And, and I think they will. They have to. Or um, or Spencer McLaughlin will be right. Clark Lee will be looking for a job. He'll be the first power four coach looking for a job. It say what you want to say, but it is true. It is very true. So um those are the answers they have to figure out. Those are the things they have to do. So that's what they got. And here we go. So anyway, uh, enough about football. I, I think, like I said, my early, my early, now this could, this is probably, this could probably change with factors, but I could see Pavia coming in because I could see this group being a really good downhill team um, and, and really kind of incorporating a quarterback into that. So, um, and then, um, I could see Nate Johnson being really good in 25 um, in this same scheme, in the similar scheme. Like I think he could take a year and just kind of learn and then just kind of come in and packages. I could definitely see that. But I could also see Nate Johnson being the starter and being being really, really good because we were excited before Pavia signed on. We were excited about the, the chances of Nate Johnson and everything that he could do, which is good. So anyway, there you go. So – uh, that's gonna uh, it's gonna do it for the football talk. So uh, we're going to uh, you know Vandy basketball played uh, their last road game at Kentucky. How did that go? Well, like I said, tail two halves. Stay tuned. All right, exciting new sponsor here, Amazon Fire TV. That is right, man. Um, do you like Fire TV? I love Fire TV. It's really good. Um, I have the Fire Stick, actually, um, which kind of functions the same way if you have your Fire TV um, set up as a just a Fire TV that comes built in. Either way, it's really, really good. And either way, Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. You can find it everywhere. Fire TV offers amazing viewing, viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free TV and live TV. That's what I have. I have the Fire Stick. I love it. Um, my eight-year-old loves Disney+. Plus. So whether it's opening weekend for baseball or college basketball tourney, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. So Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos to your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date with the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. You should trust me on this. I promise you. So learn more. Visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. (sighs) 
Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, the fire TV stuff, man. I'm, I'm fired up about it. Pun and fully intended. Um, you can see my face on Amazon TV. That's going to be great. Um, so, I'm um, really, really excited about that. Uh, what I'm not excited about is talk about, uh, well, it's never fun talking about uh, Vandy uh, basketball when they, when they lose like this, but you know, there's some turmoil going on and uh, this was a tale of two halves. Like this has been the story all season long. It's been like a broken record, right? Um, tale of two halves. Shoot. Well, first half fall apart. Second half. Um, Turnovers are even, thankfully. Um, you get out rebounded 43 to 32. Can't have it. Um, field goal percentage, UK, uh, Kentucky was 50%. Vanderbilt was 44.9%, which could have and should have been way better. Uh, they just missed a bunch of open shots. Uh, three point percentage was abysmal at 21.7% versus, ten, versus Tennessee versus Kentucky at 40.7%. Uh, defense was optional in the second half. Um, there's a lot of scoring. Defense was optional all game, really. Uh, Vanderbilt gave up easy shots, easy looks to Kentucky. Uh, they couldn't capitalize on the easy looks that Kentucky gave them at times. And of course, you know you get dominated on the boards too. So this was this was a rough go for for Stack and the crew. Um, and I don't know what that means for his future. Uh, but you keep losing games like this, I. You know, I maintain this, and I like Stack. I think he's a good coach. Don't get me wrong. I think he's. I think there's a lot of good things that he's done, and I don't want to detract from that. But I just really, honestly, think there needs to be a change. And unfortunately, I, I hate saying that, but there absolutely has to be a change at three and fourteen in the conference, eight twenty two overall in year five, with no tournament uh, appearances. I just think it's time for a change, and maybe we get it. Maybe maybe we don't. Uh, but Tyron Lawrence is your leading scorer. Uh, Ezra Manion is your second leading scorer, and then Lubin was your third leading scorer. All three of those guys in double digits. You had uh, Lewis off the bench with double digits, so you had some you had some decent scoring. But it was like you know in baseball when you have like twelve hits, but they're all scattered. They don't really have much of an impact. Um, this was kind of the, the case there. Um, but they give up 20, 11 uh, to Reeves and Wagner. They give up 23 points to Dillingham off the bench. That can't happen. Um, so that's probably a reason why uh, this game got out of hand. 93-77 was the total, um, was the final, I should say. Uh, but I just, I don't know, man. Like, you watch this team and – I just feel like it's saying the same thing over and over again. Get out rebounded. Abysmal shooting in the second half. Go on these cold streaks. Can't close out. Give too many open looks. Don't communicate. It's been like that from game one to now. And only eight times were they able to overcome that. And there was a couple times where you almost did. But for the most part, they have not been in many of these ball games. And that's unfortunate. These kids play these these players. Man, Yon, dude poured his heart, soul, and guts out there on the court. Man, he's given his all. Tyra Lawrence has improved. I'm gonna go with the positives here. I'm not gonna be negative, Nancy. Um, negative Norberto. Those guys, man, they play hard. Lubin has developed. Tyra Lawrence has developed. He's he's turned into a more consistent player. Man, Yon is a dog. Um, but they just they. They don't have any depth, and they just haven't got any better at shooting. And that falls, and, and ultimately that falls in Stackhouse. I don't see any other way around it. I don't see how I can be politically correct about it. I don't see how I can be super super positive about it. The players are playing hard. They're playing to their they're playing to their peak performance, but the peak performance just is cutting it because they're not developing beyond that. They're not developing good shots and, and learning how to take advantage. They're not closing out on defense. They're not talking. So th there's, there's, there is a disconnect somewhere. And unfortunately, they haven't found it, which is a massive problem. And that's probably why we're having this conversation. But 
9377 is your total. This is kind of like your once in a blue moon basketball update. But um, I just, I don't know. I think it's time. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just, that just is what it is. Jerry Stackhouse will be, um, he'll reset. He'll go to the NBA. He'll, he'll get on a bench somewhere in the NBA and work his way back up the food chain. And I think he'll be a really good NBA coach because I think the coaching styles are vastly different. That's not a knock on Jerry Stackhouse. I just think the coaching styles are extremely different and it just didn't work out here, but it's just, it's just time. It is, it is that time. And so uh, with that time, speaking of that time, it is that time for me to get out of here. Um, and uh, so I, I want to thank you for, for listening. Make sure you, you pop on over to locked on sec, make sure you go to locked on college football. Also uh, Spencer McLaughlin, he, um, he, did a take about Clark Lee. So if you want to go hear his uh, his deal on Clark Lee from Monday's show, go look at it. Um, go check it out. Go compare his notes to mine. And, uh, you know, obviously he doesn't follow follow this program as uh, closely as, as we do. Um, but I would love to debate with him. I would love to talk with him and just kind of have a fun show and do a crossover or, or be a guest on his show. Yes, Spencer, I'm inviting myself. Uh, so that would be fun. So anyway, but that's going to do it for us here. We're locked on Vandy. Thank you to the everydayers without you guys. It makes it, po- makes it everything possible. See, these are my, these are my notes. Cage picture. Um, proud of East Cal. Weta. So we're locked on Vandy podcast. Thank you for listening. Follow the show on social media, find us on YouTube, subscribe to us, uh, wherever you get your podcast and uh, until tomorrow, anchor down and we'll see you back here better than ever. Peace out.